Now, uh, case uh, 10, a 20-year-old male with a thigh nodule, and it was excised. They don't have any other history. This is a, a very old case. Here we've got a nodule, or kind of multi-nodular um, uh, proliferation here, growing in the dermis and the subcutis. Kind of infiltrative borders. And the, even from low power, we can see that these are large cells with abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm. Very dense eosinophilic cytoplasm. Almost, to my eye, almost kind of squamoid a little bit. They look almost like the cytoplasmic, you know, density and texture of uh, keratinocytes, you know. Um, the other thing that they might remind you of or make you think of, epithelioid cells with large nuclei and pale open chromatin, almost clear chromatin and big nucleoli and abundant cytoplasm that's dense eosinophilic is epithelioid sarcoma. Right away, if I see cells like this, I want to think of epithelioid sarcoma. I might think of a poorly differentiated carcinoma. I might think of other things as well. Maybe, uh, maybe a reticulohistiocytoma even. I don't think there's any shame in thinking about that in the differential for a case like this. Some people have, have thought that these look like rhabdomyoblasts. Personally, I don't really think so that much, but, uh, but there have been some authors that think that these look like uh, rhabdoid or rhabdomyoblastic cells, okay? So um, the other thing I want to point out here is that uh, those cells looked epithelioid, but over here, the cells look more spindled, kind of, kind of elongated and spindled to epithelioid cells with large nuclei, kind of pretty atypical nuclei, but instead of being hyperchromatic, often kind of times this pale nuclear chromatin. And look in between, scattered neutrophils. That is a really helpful clue. It's not always present. I think about half of cases have this. But when you see that, that is a great clue for the diagnosis. So that's especially why I picked this case, because I thought it beautifully highlights the scattered neutrophils. Now, this tumor classically is going to be diffusely, strongly positive for pancytokeratin, negative for CD34, strong diffuse positive for ERG, and oftentimes, I think about half or more of cases, strongly positive for CD31. And it would be negative for Desmond. So if you had any confusion about could this be rhabdoids, rhabdomyoblastic cells, no. Desmond will be negative here. So I think hopefully you, if you know of this entity, it's quite rare. But if you've heard about it before, you'll recognize what it is. This is called pseudomyogenic hemangioendothelioma, a.k.a. epithelioid sarcoma-like hemangioendothelioma. And even though that name's a little more unwieldy, I actually really like that name uh, because it really um, amplifies the fact that this tumor is easy to misdiagnose as epithelioid sarcoma. And um, some of the, the initial series on this, there were rare individual cases that reported before, I think, but the, one of the first uh, series was by uh, Fulp and Billing and, uh, Billings, Fulp and Weiss, um, and um, who described these as epithelial sarcoma-like hemangioendothelioma uh, because uh, many of the cases in their series, in fact, most of the cases in their series, were either misdiagnosed as epithelial sarcoma or it was sent in in consult and epithelial sarcoma was one of the differential diagnoses. And it, you can imagine why. Strong diffuse keratin uh, makes sense. Um, and also keep in mind, epithelial sarcomas can be ERG positive, about half of cases. Like I told you earlier, ERG is a very sensitive vascular marker, but it is not specific. It can be positive in a variety of other things. Epithelioid sarcoma, prostate cancer, um, uh, um, acute myeloid leukemias are often ERG positive. It's actually a really nice marker for AML, in fact. And I've seen cases of AML uh, with an unusual presentation in soft tissue that almost got misdiagnosed as epithelioid angiosarcoma. So please remember, if there's any doubt morphologically if something is a vascular tumor or not, if ERG's positive, great, but then consider maybe doing a CD31 or a CD34 also to help further prove that. Now, this tumor here is, is usually CD34 negative, all right? But, and it will, it will be uh, positive for ERG, like I said. And um, uh, it is, uh, it's going to also have retained nuclear I and I1 expression. So if you were having a debate about could this be epithelial sarcoma, I and I1, which I usually like to do to confirm a diagnosis of epithelial sarcoma because the vast majority have loss of I and I1, this tumor, pseudomyogenic hemangioendothelioma, or aka epithelial sarcoma like hemangioendothelioma, will have retained nuclear I and I1, aka SMARC B1 expression. 
All right. So um, back to the story, though. These were originally described as epithelial sarcoma, like hemangiotothelioma, and then uh, Hornick and Fletcher later had a, another series where they suggested an alternative name of pseudomyogenic hemangiotothelioma, and that's the name that the WHO currently uses. But it, an acceptable alternative is epithelial sarcoma, like hemangiotothelioma. Whichever name you like, just remember that depending on your point of view, it could look rhabdoid, it or myogenic, or it could look epithelial sarcoma, like, and it has a very unusual combination. Of, of markers, and you may be wondering, why the heck is this called hemangioendothelioma? There are no blister cells, there are no blood-filled spaces, there are no vascular lumens, nothing. Nothing whatsoever to suggest that this is an endothelial tumor. So this is a tumor that we have to kind of believe, uh, have extra faith in our immunohistochemical um, studies, because this is a tumor that is thought to be vascular because of its immunophenotype because it expresses CD31 and ERG. Even though CD34 is negative, but it can be negative in vascular tumors sometimes, which is why it's not my favorite endothelial marker. In fact, it's my least, well, not my least favorite, but it's not my favorite. I like ERG and CD31 much better. But initially, this was thought to be a vascular tumor because it had ERG or CD31 expression, okay? And more recent studies molecularly, I think, are pretty supportive of this truly being an endothelial tumor because these tumors often have a fusion of FOSB and serpene uh, genes. And let me look at my notes here to make sure I get the percentages right. Um, the, the most prominent is serpene FOSB but also an alternative fusion between ACT-B and FOSB have been described. And FOSB and, and FOS and FOSB both have uh, been described in a variety of different tumors, not all of them vascular, but, but a variety of vascular tumors, including epithelioid hemangioma slash ALAG, like we talked about earlier, can have FOSB. And so here in pseudomyogenic hemangioendothelioma, FOSB serpene fusion or FOSB and ACT-B fusion uh, can be seen. So that I think is further support for the idea of this being an endothelial tumor, one that doesn't make vascular channels strangely. There's another important thing I want you to remember before we move on to the next case, and that is that this is a tumor, and the reason that it, it, it deserves the name hemangioendothelioma, this is a tumor that um, often has multiple lesions. It's multifocal in about 60% of cases, and multifocal oftentimes within one extremity, like in the right leg, for example, or in the arm, okay? Um, so it can be regionally multifocal, and those are thought, my understanding is that, uh, that our current thinking is that these actually represent regional metastases, um, but they don't often spread beyond that to, to have distant metastases. So they can be multifocal in 60%. They involve the skin in about 75% of cases, the muscle in 50% of cases, and the bone in 20% of cases. Um, so uh, that's from the WHO fourth edition. I'm reading those stats there. But I think it's important to remember that they can present as multiple nodules, often in the same extremity, and they often present in multiple layers of the tissue, dermis, subcutis, muscle, and even bone. Um, and so if you look at these on like a CT or a PET CT, you're going to see multiple nodules in a region. It's going to look like multifocal metastases, which again is probably what it is. But this is not the kind of, uh, you know, that looks very aggressive on imaging and yet has very indolent behavior and distant metastases or more aggressive behavior is actually uh, quite uh, rare. Uh, but there have been some that metastasize to the lungs, um, okay? And um, uh, the histologic features do not help us in predicting which of these cases will metastasize. But it seems like most patients have a good prognosis, but they do have a multivocal disease that can be problematic to manage um, uh, from a clinical perspective, okay? So I think this is a really nice characteristic example of pseudomyogenic hemangioendothelioma. And again, totally unrelated to epithelial hemangioma, hemangioendothelioma, totally unrelated to Kaposi-form hemangioendothelioma. All of these get put into that intermediate, uh, you know, uh, not fully benign, not fully malignant, but they are not related molecularly. They have different morphologic features. They are totally unrelated tumors, okay? So I, I think this is a nice example of a rare bird. And keep in mind those neutrophils, scattered neutrophils are a great clue for this, although unfortunately not always present.